Hey everybody, okay. this is Darwin Reyna, the festival director of the Northfield Festival right here in our beautiful Stockholm, Sweden. Today I have a great filmmaker. Finally, we 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 are doing this interview. We have Michelle who made this beautiful work 50 years late. How are you, Michelle? I am doing great. How are you doing, Darwin? I'm doing great and happy. Thank you for being with us. I, honestly, this is my last interview. I was really eager to, to interview about this beautiful work. Uh, Michelle, I think this is personal, right? Let's start with the story. This is a personal yeah. thing, right? Can you tell us a little bit about the story? Yeah, so it's it's very personal because it involves my husband, who is now 59 years old. He's an African-American male who was not diagnosed with cystic fibrosis until the age of 54. And this film tells his journey, our journey, to finally getting his appropriate diagnosis 54 years late because most often cystic fibrosis is diagnosed as a child. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is, I mean, yeah, this is very personal. I guess it was a difficult process, right? For you, I mean, always been. And now you telling this story, I mean, how hard is that, Michelle? How, how? How do you start putting all the pieces together for for form this story? Was easy, difficult? How was the process of writing the script? If you write it, how, how? tell us a little bit about the pre-production process of 50 Years Late. So even though I have been an integral part of the story, I know the story, it was difficult. It was, it was def difficult and challenging emotionally. Uh, it was challenging to try to figure out just what parts we want to share and that we want to capture. And then making sure it was okay with my husband, because this is a vulnerable subject. I mean, this yeah. is something he's lived, uh, it's personal. And so he was okay with it. And then it was just bringing it all together. But it was so worth everything that went into telling this story. Wow. Yeah. Terry, I mean, he's, I love the end. You know, the end is very, you guys got to watch it, the film. We're not going to spoil because it's a beautiful end, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, Mich uh, Michelle, tell me the production time. How long was the process of start shooting? And then when you guys stopped shooting, tell me how difficult was as well, because you say you have to put all the people together, right? That's not easy to do. I know I'm a filmmaker, not as good as you, <laughs> but I'm on my way. Tell, tell us a little bit. So really the pre-work was most challenging because we had two individuals that were coming from Dallas, Texas to support this, Shauna Lindsay and her husband. And what's so remarkable about Shauna and Tim was their involvement throughout. So Shauna actually sings the theme song. You hear it throughout the movie she wrote and performed the theme song. She also served as a producer mm -hmm. and her and her husband acted in it. So we had all these moving parts. So we knew we had to work diligently ahead of time to get everybody together because we had an opportunity for a one day shoot and that was it. So, wow. so much work went into it beforehand to make sure we could pull that off seamlessly and we did. Yes, definitely. One day, wow. You guys made magic. We, definitely. we were hustling. But you, yeah, yeah you yeah. were hard in the pre-production, correct, to put everybody together. So how, yeah. how, what was difficult during that day of shooting? What do you think? Everything was difficult, I guess. You guys were rushing. How was that? Because it was pulled together so fast and we were dealing with um, a deadline because of everybody's schedule, just getting everybody on one accord to make sure they understood the, the theme and the feel of what we were trying to capture. Uh, it wasn't a, a whole lot of time to say, this is this is the, the script, this is this, this is that. Everybody had to be ready to go because we had to shoot in a few hours and everybody had places to be. So right. you're dealing with the not intimidation, but the concern of, are we gonna actually be able to put this off and make it happen? And it's, it's amazing how it all came together. 
Yes. And even at the last minute, um, our original editor was not going to be able to make our deadline. And we found one somewhere else that's stand and put it off in a few, you know, with in record time. Right, right. Michelle, so you were directing your husband and sometimes you were in front of the camera too. How was that process? I guess that's a hard part, right? To be that's behind camera. That's a hard camera. part. <laughs> yes. That's a very hard part because he, he saw me more as the wife than the director. Right. And I had to keep reminding him, I'm not in wife mode today. <laughs> I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And he's like, well, I don't really want to do this. I really don't want to do that. So once we got past that, it, it things went smoothly. But right. he is so excited about telling his story. And even though it's a very, very emotional topic, mm -hmm. he knows that his suffering is not in vain because his story, our story is helping to inspire other people. And that makes it, that makes it exciting and let you know that your suffering is not in vain. Right, it's beautiful, yes. Michelle, tell me, how long you were been thinking in doing this? For how long, for how long you've been thinking actually doing, I guess you've been thinking this for a long time, right? And, and why you, and how do you come to the realization, okay, let's do it. What, what pushed you to do that, to do the, the film? That's a good it? question. I've always wanted to share um, his story ever since his diagnosis. It's been on my mind. We got to get his story out there. And that's one of the reasons we started the National Organization of African Americans with Cystic Fibrosis, mm -hmm. which is also known as NOACEL, to get the story out because of cystic fibrosis being perceived to be a white person's disease. Right. We knew we had a lot of work to help educate and engage the cystic fibrosis community. But what happened in late March, it was announced that it was gonna be the first cystic fibrosis awareness film festival. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, well, we can't miss the first cystic fibrosis film festival. That meant I had literally just a few weeks to pull this together if we were going to participate in that film festival. And that is what kind of got everything going. And then to have the opportunity to participate in other festivals like T TNFL and all these other festivals, it has just been rewarding. But that is what lit the fire. Right. We definitely didn't want to have a cystic fibrosis story and miss the first cystic fibrosis film festival. So right. that got us excited and got us moving. Wow. I'm impressed, you know, with you, Michelle, because you have to make the film and it's personal. How do you put boundaries, right? To be the director, to tell this story and also, you know, to feel your husband, right? This is, yeah. I guess, the most hardest part for you, right, Michelle? It, it is because you're playing multiple parts. Mm -hmm. Even in the film, I'm playing my part as a fiance, mm -hmm. as a wife, then I'm directing, then I'm producing. And it's, it's like I'm wearing all these different hats and it's all these different puzzle pieces. But we, we were just pleased with the way everything came together yeah. at the end. And it I, I wanna really just give, a, credit to where credit is due, had wonderful actors, uh, had Dr. Amy Esh Hester, who was also my mentor that helped us to um, bring the production team together, our editor, David Weekly, our um, um, cinematology, cinematology uh, sorry, um, Roger Robinson. I mean, everybody, all hands were on deck to make sure that this was the best experience. Right, right, yes. I'm just watching it here, you know, I I like it. It's beautiful work. I mean, it's telling a beautiful story. Michelle, tell me the post-production time. How long was the, well, it was, you guys edited it also fast because you want to reach the deadline of that festival, right? That you mentioned. Yes. So yes. how long was yes. that process? And how do you work with the editor? So he was actually traveling. He was in Australia. Oh. 
So it was, it was challenging. It, it was nothing but a blessing that he even took on the project wow. because at that point we were talking about a seven to 10 day turnaround and I was scheduled to have surgery. So it was just crazy the wow. way it came to gather. Um, so I worked with him remotely and he truly understood the vision mm -hmm. and the, the work was just beautifully done. Um, again, I mentioned the symptomatology uh, uh, um, early, but mm -hmm. earlier, but the, the work was just beautifully done. All right. How, hey, Michelle, the music is also beautiful. Is the, how do you choose the music? How do you, it was something that came together at the end or it was before when you were writing the script during the production that came the music to you or, or how was that process for you to choose music? I have the best music supervisor who's also my closest friend, Shauna Lindsay. And she is the one with her husband that came from Dallas. And I was talking to her and because we are such good friends and so close, she knows our story. And I said, Shauna, I mean, I'm her biggest fan. So I said, Shauna, I want you to, to sing, to, to provide a song mm -hmm. for this project. And I said, what do you have available? And when she told me about everything and I heard it, I said, I don't need to hear anything else. That is the song that captures the heart of our journey. So it, it was just, when I tell you everything just came together, ideally, even finding someone that to play me, Tiara Walls to play my husband, mm -hmm. um, Wesley Peters to, 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 to play even Terry's mom, um, the Vega, uh, Ivory and her son, my godson to play a younger Terry, my mm -hmm. sister step in to, to play a waitress. So everybody just wow. played different parts. Uh, a friend of mine from Red Cross that played a doctor, another um, friend of Amy's who played another doctor, everything just came together. And I, I could not have been more pleased. You made it, Michelle. I mean, it's no easy, you know, that. <laughs> it's no easy at all because no. What you're telling me right now, I thought you, it was a long process, but you were really doing it the right way and fast, you know, and just because you want to tell this story. And that's it, the beautiful thing. Uh, Michelle, tell me, what do you learn besides you telling us this story that we need to know, you know, the awareness that we need to know? In the filmmaking side, what do you learn as a filmmaker making this, uh, this beautiful work 50 years late, 54? I learned the beauty of creativity, learning to stay open to change because yeah. you have a, a specific ideal, maybe for one shot mm -hmm. and someone else said, well, have you thought about this? And, and I truly believe the value of being a director, producer, writer is involving different people in the process and say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And to not go into it with the feeling that this is the only way it could be to stay open to change and creativity. I also learned the value of having people that can connect to your story. Mm -hmm. If they can connect to your story, they can connect to your heart. And then the way they help to resonate and share that story, um, it just brings a authenticity to it, it makes it more genuine. So right. it's just important to have people that's on, on board with you and that really values the story that you're trying to depict. Right, that's two great answers you give me right there. Michelle, how was we directing Terry? Uh, there was moment of tension, what do you think? Or, or he there was, was definitely really? moments of tension. The first early on scene, he was supposed to bring out coffee and then he wasted the coffee on me. So I'm doing this shoot with coffee on me, hoping nobody notices and trying not to frown and be frustrated because I didn't see him as an actor just wasting coffee on me, but my husband. Mm -hmm. And so I had to regroup, but we got through it. He had his moments where he was tired and 
um, ready to go. And I had my moments, but we all stepped up to the plate and made it happen. Right. Michelle, my last question for you. What do you think is the hardest part in filmmaking? We got three phases, right? Pre-production, yes. production, and post-production. We need them all. That's, you know, it's, we need them. But which one is the one that you say, oh, this is hard, but which one you think of the three phases we have? You're right. They are all equally challenging in their own right. You know, pre-production is challenging just to make up your mind, I'm going to do this. Post-production is challenging because you want it pulled through in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. But for me, the most stressed part was the production itself, worrying about everybody showing up, everybody showing up on time, all hands on deck, and making sure we resonated the story with passion and with, with, with authenticity. All right. Hey, Michelle, tell me one thing, one more question. How is Michelle directing? Are you, a, you know, there are many types of directors, right? Because, yeah, yes. very, you know, very strict. Others are very freely. Others are really insecure. You know, there are many types. How, how is Michelle as a director? Are you are very strict or are you very like, I mean, you already told me that, you know, like, we have to be open to improvise, to, to adapt. That's key. That's a real filmmaker right there. But how is Michelle as a director? What do you think, Michelle? I would love to be directed by me. <laughs> <laughs> I am a people's person and I believe in making everyone feel comfortable yeah. and I believe in synergy. So I come and I direct from a perspective that this is our project, not my project, mm -hmm. our project. And that brings a different level of collaboration and everybody has a sense of ownership at that point where they want to make it successful so i'm a cheerleader and not just a director i let individuals know i i have confidence in them i value them i'm very sentimental so i always give little special mementos um, I just try to make the moment special mm -hmm. and that way people can really embrace it and, get, and be the best that they can be. Beautiful, beautiful answer. Uh, Michelle, how can we get in contact with you if we want to say 50 years late, I don't know, a, a help or how can we get in contact? You got a website that you can share with us with all the filmmakers yeah. from the Northfield Festival in, in Sweden. Uh, how can we get in contact with you? So we actually have two websites. We have one specifically for the movie, which is 54yearslate.com. Okay. And you can also go to our organization's website, the National Organization of African-Americans with Cystic Fibrosis. Okay. And that's abbreviated N-O-A-A-C-L, and that's dot org, O-R-G. And a lot of people always say, how do you pronounce N-O-A-A-C-L? But we pronounce it Noah self. Mm -hmm. And I, you can also find us on social media, on Facebook, on link, LinkedIn, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Google us, you will find us. But both those websites, you can definitely reach us through. And my email address is noahself at gmail.com. N-O-A-A-C-L at gmail.com. So... A lot of options to reach us. Definitely. Uh, Michelle, you're going to be with us online, right? You got to watch the old, because you are in the best Absolutely. documentary. Yes, best short documentary. I won't but, miss it. Yeah, I won't miss it, okay? Hey, we're gonna I know, have and I really appreciate what your organization is doing to bring attention and awareness to films and stories like 54 Years Late. Yeah, definitely. That's what we need, you know. We need to show stories, you know. True stories, we need to show fiction. We need to show everything, but also the, the, the true stories, you know, which it comes, gets to the heart, right? Which is 50 years late. Michelle, I'm very glad to, we finally, we finally meet. Yes. Yes, finally. Yes, finally. <laughs>
So we are yeah, yeah. closing our interviews for this year in the in the, in the Northfield Festival. Uh, Michelle, thank you very much. See you online 24, 25, 26 of February. Okay. Remember, I we are in to it. Uh, Michelle, we are in Sweden. So times is always gonna be a few hours behind in yes. the US, okay? Yes, definitely. And thank you again for this opportunity, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day. Say hello to Terry, okay? Great, I will. great, great man. Thank Bye, Michelle. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.